Hello friends, today we will be seeing the Insight 75 days plan for revision tests uh, day 2 and uh, I, I have made notes out of it and this is based on the economy per se for day 2. So let's start and see the first topic. This is related to the structural change in the economy and it basically denotes the fundamental changes in basic features of economy over long period. And what is the structure of economy meaning? It is meaning that occupational structure, sectoral distribution of income, industrial pattern, composition of exports, savings to GDP ratio, etc. changes over time. And after the 1991 liberalization, privatization and globalization reforms in India, agricultural based economy transformed into the services based economy basically. The second topic is related to the tax, tax expenditure and what does this term denotes? Tax expenditure refers to the opportunity cost of taxing at concessional rates to taxpayers by giving them exemption, deductions, rebates, deferrals, credits, etc. So what is the opportunity cost basically here? It is the loss of other, uh, other alternatives when one alternative is chosen. So when you choose to give the uh, tax rebates, you will have to actually show ki how much more revenue uh, could you have collected if it has not been given at the initial level itself. So measure it is the measure of indirect subsidy to the taxpayers. What is the third topic? This is relating to the twin balance sheet problem. So it is relating to the stressed balance sheets of banks due to two factors. That is first the non-performing assets or the bad loans and the second thing is heavily indebted corporates. So both creates the twin balance sheet syndrome or twin balance sheet problem. What is the fourth topic? It is relating to the inflation. Everybody knows that inflation is the general uh, rise in the level of prices. But what about the deflation? So in, it is the opposite of deflation. Uh, inflation. Uh, deflation is the opposite of inflation. So deflation basically means general fall in level of prices. And what about the disinflation? Disinflation refers to the reduction in rate of inflation. So it is about rate of inflation and deflation is about level of prices. So disinflation talks about reduction in rate of inflation. And what about the stagflation? So stagflation is basically uh, the term denoting during the recession when you have the inflation also that is the general rise of level of prices plus the rising unemployment also. So this is the twin problem kind of situation when stagflation happens. What is the reflation? So reflation is the attempt to raise prices to counter deflationary prices. Right? So when the general fall in level of prices is there means the deflationary situations is there. The Any attempt to raise the prices will be called as the reflation attempt. What is the receipts that has been uh, you know uh, taken by government of India in 2017-18? So revenue from direct taxes is more than or greater than the indirect taxes. So they have collected the indirect taxes more means the government has collected, collected the direct taxes more and it is more than the indirect taxes. and. Uh, tax revenue receipts tax revenue receipts is the is more than the non tax revenue receipts over here okay the next topic is uh, topic is related to open acreage licensing policy so this is oalp open acreage licensing policy this talks about a company uh, when they get the option to select hydrocarbon exploration blocks on its own without waiting for the formal bid round from the government. So now they can actually get the option to select the exploration blocks on their own without waiting for the formal bid round. A bidder intending to explore hydrocarbons like oil and gas, coal bed methane, gas hydrate, etc. may apply for new block exploration that is not already covered under the license given. India's tax to GDP ratio. So the, this ratio is well below the emerging market economies of the world relative to the India. 
so how to increase the tax to gdp ratio in india the following reasons uh, you know following measures to increase tax income can be done in india that is increasing the indirect tax rate second thing is gst the introduction of gst has happened it will be increasing the tax to gdp ratio then increasing the tax base itself means how many people will be included under the taxes tax uh, system that will be increasing the ta uh, tax based income of the government for uh, ultimately then formal banking system can enhance it digital transactions can enhance the tax to gdp ratio what is the rap repo rate so repo rate here if you will be uh, decreasing the repo rate then commercial banks can borrow more money from rbi at cheaper rate so this is the definition also of the definition of repo rate that uh, if any bank is taking loan from uh, rbi that is called repo rate at the rate at which they are taking the loan from rbi so if they are if the rbi is decreasing the repo rate definitely the commercial banks can uh, borrow more money from rbi at cheaper rate so what will be the impact on the consumers the rates will be decreasing if the uh, repo rate is decreasing the rates to the consumer of uh, loans taken by them may decrease also this is about agni 5 missile so this is ballistic missile first of all then it is surface to surface missile then third thing is that it it can carry nuclear warhead of 1.5 tons and it can go up to the range of 5000 km and uh, and plus distance also so this is the longest missile in india's arsenal and it can cover most parts of china also there are many new technologies uh, indigenously developed which has been uh, inculcated into it uh, that is uh, very high accuracy ring laser gyro or gyro inertial navigation that is rins rins and second thing is most modern or accurate micro navigation that is mins so more accurate systems of navigations are being used over here and this is a ballistic missile calvary class so what is calvary class it is the diesel electric attack submarine this is the diesel electric attack submarine and it is based on a scorpion class submarine being built for indian navy and it is designed by dcns which is the agency a uh, french naval defense and energy company and it is manufactured by mazgaon dock mumbai next thing gst council good sense services tax council so this is a constitutional body and it recommends to the union state on gst issues and this is being chaired by union finance ministers the members are union minister of state mos for revenue or finance and then the all of the states ministers in charge of taxation and finance will be included as a member also states have power to impose indirect taxes on petrol and alcohol separately also even if the gst has been constitutionally made so they are free to impose indirect taxes on petrol and al alcohol and extra, uh, some of the other articles as of now next thing surface or surface act what is the full form of this securitization securitization and reconstruction reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of securities interest act so this is a very big line uh, so this act has been made in 2002 and this is a kind of new millennial act only and it allows banks or financial institutions to auction residential or commercial properties if the loan taker has defaulted on the loans they can recover the loans next thing financial stability report fsr financial stability report uh, is being released by rbi and it reflects the collective assessment of sub committee of fsdc that is uh, that is headed by the finance minister okay and it actually talks about the risks of financial stability resilience of financial system then discusses the development and regulation of financial sector the next thing psl priority sector lending lending by commercial bank for certain sectors is being identified by rbi and that is called priority sector lending psl 
and should constitute 40% of adjusted net bank credit ANBC or credit equivalent amount of off balance sheet exposure whichever is higher you have to uh, actually give to the priority sector lending to extent of shortfall if any shortfall is happening and if banks are not able to actually give 40% of uh, this credit to the uh, the priority sector lenders then they will have to invest that much of amount in RIDF that is Rural Infrastructure Development Fund established by, by uh, with NABARD and other funds with NABARD or National Housing Bank or SIDBI or Mudra Limited as decided by RBI or they can even purchase PSL certificates that is uh, the priority sector lending certificate called PSLC. Banks who fail to lend a stipulated PSL that is uh, priority sector lending are not subject to suspension of bank license. This is a very important uh, thing to remember. The next thing is related to Mudra Bank. Mudra Bank is micro units development refinancing agency and uh, this is a refinance institutions as well as regulator for the microfinance institutions. It doesn't lend directly to the consumers or target groups. It is primarily responsible for policy guidelines to MSCs and uh, rating of MFI activities. It lays down the financial practices it, uh, and the methods of recovery also. And uh, it also promotes the right technology solutions for last mile. And it is uh, running the credit guarantee scheme for guarantees to loans extended to micro enterprises as well as it is creating the architecture of last, last mile credit delivery to the micro businesses under Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana. Core inflation. So core inflation is also known as underlying inflation. Core inflation basically means the headline inflation minus inflation uh, of the volatile prices. So you have to actually calculate first headline inflation and then you can minus the uh, food and energy prices which is very volatile. Then you can get the core inflation or underlying inflation or exact inflation. Then the next topic Ayush, uh, Ayushman Bharat Health Scheme. Cover of rupees 5 lakh per family per year is being given through this program or scheme, Ayushman Bharat Health Scheme. It is to ensure that nobody is left out, especially women, children, elderly. There will be no cap on family size and age. This is a very important fact. Also include pre and post hospitalization expenses and more than 10 crore families based on socio-economic cost and such databases will be the target beneficiaries. Benefits of a scheme are portable across country. This is a very important fact and uh, they can take cashless benefits from any public or private impaneled hospitals across country. And uh, Ayushman Bharat National Health Protection Mission Agency at the national level would be put in place. States and UTs would be advised to implement a scheme by a dedicated entity called State Health Agency SHA by creating either uh, the existing trust society not for profit company or a state nodal agency or set up a new entity states and UTs can decide to implement a scheme through ins insurance company or directly to through trust or society or use an integrated model next thing digital public credit registry it was actually recommended by the ym deosthali committee you must remember this ym deosthali committee has recommended public credit registry and now digital public credit registry has been initiated with by the uh, Reserve Bank of India and it will be wide based digital PSR to check financial delinquencies and it will capture the details of all borrowers all willful defaulters and even the pending legal suits please uh, remember this thing data from entities like market regulators SEBI and corporate affairs ministry GSTN or in insolvency bankruptcy board of India etc etc and uh, the YM Deosali committee recommendation gave the idea behind creating public registry to collect financial information information of individual and corporate borrowers under one platform and what is the objective of public credit registry it will strengthen the credit culture of Indian economy it will improve the India's ease of doing business parameters at World Bank what are where is the assumption island so it is a small island in outer islands of Seychelles, north of Madagascar and India in 2018 
has signed an agreement with the Seychelles to build and operate a joint military facilities on a portion of island. So this assumes a very important segment in India's strategic strategic significance in Indian Ocean. It's partly or it's partly island. It is a disputed group of island, more than 100 reefs, sometimes grouped it, uh, in submerged old atolls, South China Sea Archipelago. So it's partly island is in South China Sea Archipelago. Archipelago means group of island. And th they are lying uh, off the coast of Philippines, Malaysia and South Vietnam. Southern Vietnam, Malaysia and Philippines. So three countries, four countries are there around the Spartle Island. Marshall Island. So Marshall Island is a sprawling chain of volcanic islands and coral atolls in Central Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and Philippines. Right? Agricultural census. So it is being done every five years, not ten years, every five years conducted in India. First such census was done in 1970s, 1970s, not from the independence, 1970s. Central provide funds to states and entire work is done by states only. Entire work is done by states only and central provides the fund for agricultural census. What about the decennial census or the regular census done for the population of humans? Office of Register Registrar of uh, General, Office of Registrar General and Census Commissioner under Ho Ministry of Home Affairs is the in charge of decennial census it has been conducted 15 times till now population census of india is a major administrative function that's why it is under the ministry of home affairs population census of india is a uh, major administrative function census organization was set up on an ad hoc basis for each census till 1951 census but after the enactment of census act in 1948 it provided the scheme of conducti conducting population census with duty and responsibilities of census officer. In 1949, steps for developing systematic collection of statistics on size of population, its growth, etc. This organization was made responsible for generating data on population statistics, including vital statistics and census. Letter also interested with the implementation of registration of births and deaths act 1969. So you have to remember this one also births and deaths also, uh, also along with the population related or statistics on the size of population and its growth etc etc. Nuclear Ag energy agency this is a very important fact nuclear energy agency it is a specialized agency within OECD. Organization of Economic uh, uh, Development, okay, Economic Cooperation and Development. It is a uh, intergovernmental organization of industrialized countries based in Paris, France. Intergovernmental organization of industrialized countries based in Paris, France. Apart from it, India is not a part of Nuclear Energy Agency, but India is having 22 nuclear reactors in operation. That is under the seven nuclear power plants overall. And uh, it is having, the India is having total installed capacity of around 7000 megawatt. Environmental Performance Index 2018. It is a biennial report by Yale and Columbia Universities. Yale and Columbia Universities publishes biennial report on Environmental Performance Index 2018. With World Economic Forum. India is among bottom five country, not the top five, bottom five country plummeting 36 points means it is uh, its rank is becoming worse now from 141 in 2016 to now 177 by 180 then poor performance in environment health policy health environment health policy is very poor and then uh, deaths due to air pollution categories report released on sidelines of ongoing uh, world economic forum in davos switzerland next thing measures to aid in resolve wing issues of jobless growth so what is jobless growth when you increase the gdp your gdp in growth is very very uh, substantial but your job is not growing so that is called jobless growth situation so you can promote investments in small scale industries implemented uh, you can implement skill india program we can have the policy support to sunrise industries and uh, that will be impacting the situation of jobs european commission so european commission is european union's executive arm so this is the executive arm 
so takes decisions on eu's that is european union's political and strategic direction every year produces report on results achieved with eu budget and how previous years budget was managed european parliament so it is directly elected every 5 year by universal adult suffrage since 1979 parliamentary institution of european union so this is the parliamentary institution of european union together with the council of uh, european uh, union and european council it uh, exercises legislative function and it is composed of 751 members who represent second largest democratic electorate in world after parliament of india and largest transnational democratic electorate in world and they are having 375 million voters in 2009 then we have invest india india's official agency which is promoting investment and they are facilitating the investment in india and uh, outside india also so the, the, this is a uh, uh, invest india is a not for profit organization it is a single window facilitator and it was set up in 2010 for prospective overseas and aspiring indian investors desiring to invest in foreign locations it provides sector specific and state specific information assists in expediting regulatory approvals offers hand holding services and its structure it is a structural mechanism to attract investment so invest india is a joint venture company between dipp department of industrial Promo policy and promotion ministry of commerce and it is having dipp is having 35% equity out of 100% then fikki this is a trade body so trade body is having 51% equity then state governments is having 0.5% each inside this joint venture company so dipp fikki and state governments each is having the stake and dipp is having the middle uh, uh, stake and the fikki is having the maximum stake stake means it is a primarily industry heavy the the private industry heavy invest uh, india is a private investment heavy uh, joint co uh, venture company essentially private company unlike uh, india brand equ equity so india brand equity is a public company not a private company india brand equity foundation another investment promotion agency in india set up by ministry of commerce then generalized system of preferences this is uh, very much in news recently 1976 by trade act of 1974 it was uh, started then it is a us trade program generalized system of preferences uh, is a us trade program to promote economic growth in developing world by providing preferential duty free entry and it is uh, catering to 4800 products from 129 beneficiary countries and territories india has been biggest beneficiary and it accounted for over 1/4 of goods that got duty free access into united states of america in 2017 announcement to terminate generalized system of preferences by us for india means competitiveness to suffer in terms like garments engineering intermediary goods in us market so this is the last topic now export and import bank of india exim 1982 so export and import bank of india act 1981 uh, through this act it has been made then finance institution it is a finance institution since its inception catalyst and key promoter of cross border trade and investment and purveyor of export credit it evolved into major role in partnering indian partnering indian industries particularly small and medium enterprises in their globalization efforts wide range of products plus services are being offered at all stages of business cycle by the exim exim bank so these are import technology export product development export production and then export marketing pre and post shipment and then overseas investment etc etc so thank you for watching i will be coming up with the day third revision test also soon so till then bye please like share and comment whatever you want to comment thank you